what if I told you there's a math problem? Like so simple a child could understand it. Okay. But it stumped mathematicians for like almost a century. Really? Yeah. It sounds That's unbelievable, not... right? Yeah. But it's true. Wow. We're diving into this like bizarre world of the Collatz conjecture today. Okay. It's also known as the 3x plus 1 problem. Mm -hmm. um, you shared some fascinating articles and research with me on this. And I have to say, yeah, it's one of the most like intriguing mathematical mysteries I've ever encountered. It really does capture the imagination. Yeah. Absolutely. So this conjecture is all about a simple math rule, but it leads to this surprisingly complex behavior. Right. Leaving even you know, brilliant minds baffled. Yeah. The rule itself is deceptively easy. Okay. You start with any positive whole number, right? Mm -hmm. If it's odd, you multiply by three and add one. Uh. If it's even, you divide by two. Got it. Then you just keep repeating this process with the result. Okay. The conjecture states that no matter what number you start with, you'll always eventually land back at the number one. Yeah. Falling into this loop of four, two, one. And the mind boggling part is this has been tested. Yeah. On incredibly large numbers. We're talking quintillions here. Quintillions. Numbers with 18 zeros. Wow. And yet, despite this mountain of evidence, no one has been able to mathematically prove that this holds true for every single number. It's true. Which means... There's a chance, however small, right. that some number out there breaks the pattern. That is what makes this so captivating, right? It's not just a math problem. It's true. It's about the limits of knowledge, the nature of proof. Right and the surprising complexity that can arise from like these simple rules. It's a fascinating glimpse into how even seemingly straightforward mathematical concepts can lead us to these profound questions yeah. about the universe and our ability to understand it. Exactly. It really makes you question like what it means to truly know something. Yeah. So let's start by going back to the beginning. This, you know, captivating puzzle was first introduced in the 1930s by a German mathematician named Lothar Kalaths. It quickly spread through the mathematical community like wildfire, wow. capturing the curiosity of anyone who encountered it. And it's even picked up a bunch of nicknames along the way, like yeah. the Hailstone problem, the Syracuse problem, the Ulam conjecture, even the 3n plus 1 problem. Right. Each name reflects a slightly different perspective on the problem. Yeah. But it was the name Collatz conjecture that ultimately stuck. Yeah. And then came computers, which enabled us to test the conjecture on a scale that was previously unimaginable. And that's when things really took off. Yeah. Mathematicians could suddenly check the conjecture's validity for a vastly larger range of numbers, right. leading to a massive amount of empirical evidence supporting its truth. But here's the catch. Okay. Even with billions and trillions of numbers tested, yeah. it still doesn't constitute a mathematical proof. Because no amount of empirical checking can ever cover the infinity of numbers. Right. There's always a possibility, however remote, yeah. of that one elusive counterexample hiding somewhere in the vast expanse of numbers. It's like searching for a needle in an infinitely large haystack, right? Yes. You might find millions of knot needles. Yeah. But that doesn't guarantee there isn't a needle lurking somewhere. It's a great analogy. Yeah. But it's important to note that the sheer volume of computational verification has significantly bolstered the mathematical community's confidence right. in the conjecture's likely truth. Let's walk through the process with an example. Okay. Say we start with the number six. All right. So we begin with six, which is even. Right. Therefore, we divide by two and we get three. Three. Now, three is odd. So we multiply by three and add one, giving us ten. Ten. Again, 10 is even, so we divide by 2 and arrive at 5. Got it. Mm -hmm. Then we apply the rule for odd numbers, multiplying yeah. by 3 and adding 1, which brings us to 16. Exactly. 16 being even takes us down to 8, then 4, then 2. Okay. And finally we reach 1. And there it is. We hit the fabled number 1. And if you continue from 1, you'll find yourself in that endless loop. 1 becomes 4, 4 becomes 2, 2 becomes 1, and so on. It's like this unpredictable dance of numbers seemingly bouncing up and down. Right. Without a clear pattern. But as you said, they always seem to find their way back to one eventually. Yeah, yeah. This apparent randomness, like within deterministic rule, is part of what makes it so fascinating, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. It's like watching a hailstone being tossed up and down by the wind, seemingly at random, but ultimately falling back to the ground. This brings us to another intriguing aspect of this problem. The total stopping time. Okay. This refers to the number of steps it takes for a starting number to reach one for the very first time. 
It's about the entire journey a number takes to reach that final destination of one. Right. And what's interesting is that some numbers reach one quite quickly, while others take surprisingly long, convoluted paths with many ups and downs. So even though every number we've tested eventually reaches one, we don't actually know how long that journey might be. Right. There could be some insanely large number out there with a total stopping time so long it would take a supercomputer years or even centuries to calculate. It's a mind-boggling concept to consider. Right. We have this seemingly straightforward rule, unpredictable behavior, and a complete lack of a definitive proof. Yeah. It's no wonder mathematicians are so captivated by this problem. They've been trying to crack this conjecture for decades, using a wide range of mathematical tools and techniques. Mm -hmm. And while they haven't solved the main puzzle yet, yeah. they have made some fascinating progress with partial results and theorems. And those partial results are what we'll delve into next. Perfect, because I'm dying to know what breakthroughs have brought us closer, even if not all the way, to solving this mathematical enigma. For sure. One concept mathematicians have explored is the idea of almost all numbers. Almost all, what does that mean exactly? Well, it doesn't literally mean every single number, but rather a vast, vast majority. So vast that the proportion of numbers that might not follow the pattern yeah. becomes practically insignificant. Right. Precisely. You yeah. know how we generally assume most people have 10 fingers, yeah. even though there are rare exceptions? Right. It's a similar concept here. So we're talking about such a large percentage of numbers that the potential exceptions are almost negligible. Exactly. And a landmark result in this area came from Terence Tao, okay. a Fields medalist. Wow. In 2019, he managed to prove that almost all numbers yeah. eventually fall below any given slowly growing function okay. during their collapse journey. Hold on. I'm, I'm trying to visualize this. Sure. So there's some kind of mathematical function that acts like a ceiling. Yeah. And almost all numbers in the collapse sequence will eventually dip below this ceiling. Yeah. No matter how high they might have climbed in the process. That's a great way to think about it. It's not about predicting an exact value, but rather demonstrating that for almost all numbers, the yeah. sequences don't just endlessly grow larger. Right. They have this inherent tendency to repeatedly dip back down right. into lower territory. That makes sense. Yeah. It reinforces the idea that there's this overall downward pull mm -hmm. throughout the process, even though there might be some wild upward swings along the way. Exactly. But while these partial results are a significant step forward, yeah. they still haven't provided a definitive proof for the conjecture as a whole. So we are still left with this tantalizing mystery. A mystery that continues to intrigue mathematicians and connect seemingly disparate areas of mathematics. That's what I find so fascinating about this problem. We're just talking about almost all numbers. Yeah. Which feels like a concept from probability well. theory. But you've also mentioned connections to chaos theory, which yeah. seems a bit counterintuitive. Yeah. Isn't the Collatz process deterministic? It is. If we have a clear set of rules, shouldn't the outcome be predictable? That's a great question, and it gets to the heart of what makes this problem so intriguing. Okay. You see, even though the rules are deterministic, the way the numbers behave in the sequence can appear incredibly chaotic. Right. And unpredictable. Okay. Sometimes they soar to unexpectedly high values. Uh-huh before plummeting back down. Right. It's this unpredictable, seemingly random behavior within a deterministic framework that draws parallels to chaos theory. So it's like having a recipe with precise measurements and instructions, yeah. but the final dish turns out completely different right. each time you make it. That's a very creative analogy. Yeah. And it highlights how even simple deterministic rules can give rise to complex right. and seemingly unpredictable outcomes. Mm -hmm. Think about the weather, for instance. Okay. We have a good understanding of the physics behind weather patterns, mm -hmm. yet predicting the weather accurately over long periods remains a challenge. So the Klatz conjecture could be hinting at a deeper truth about the nature of complexity and yeah. predictability. Precisely. And this connection to chaos theory offers another fascinating avenue for exploring the conjecture. It's incredible how this seemingly simple problem touches on so many different areas of math. It really does. We've talked about probability theory and yeah. chaos theory, but you've also mentioned connections to other areas, ah. like number theory and ergodic theory. It's yeah. like 
this one problem is a crossroads really? for all these different mathematical concepts. And each of these connections offers a different lens through which to view and analyze the conjecture. Yeah. Number theory, for example, focuses on the properties of integers. No, no. Since the Collatz conjecture deals with multiplying, adding, and dividing integers, right. number theory provides a natural framework to investigate how these operations interplay within the sequence. So number theory might help us understand the deeper relationships between the numbers in the sequence, mm -hmm. like how the factors of two and three influence the trajectory of the numbers. Exactly. And ergodic theory, which focuses on the long-term behavior of systems that evolve over time, Okay. gives us tools to analyze the distribution and movement of numbers within the collapse sequence. It's like looking at the entire forest instead of just individual trees. That's a great way to put it. Ergodic theory helps us move beyond analyzing individual numbers yeah. and instead understand the overall behavior of the system, Okay. providing insights into how the numbers as a whole move and change over many iterations. It's amazing how this one conjecture has tentacles reaching into so many diverse areas of mathematics. It's true. And to top it off, there's even a connection to complexity theory, yeah. which deals with the difficulty of computational problems. Exactly. You mentioned earlier that some mathematicians believe solving the Collatz conjecture might actually be impossible right. with our current tools and understanding of computation. It might be. That's a pretty mind-blowing concept. It is, and it's one of the reasons why complexity theorists are so intrigued by this problem. Yeah. It's possible, though not yet proven. That the conjecture is what we call undecidable. Meaning that there might be no algorithm that can definitively tell us whether it's true or false all right. for all numbers. So it could be that the answer is out there. Yeah. But we lack the mathematical tools to even find it. That's one possibility. And it raises profound questions about the limits of human knowledge and our ability to comprehend the universe. It makes you wonder if there are other truths out there, perhaps hidden in plain sight. Yeah. That we are simply incapable of grasping with our current ways of thinking. That's a very philosophical but incredibly important question to ponder. Well, this deep dive has certainly given me a lot to think about. Me too. But we haven't even touched on why this problem has been so stubbornly resistant to a definitive proof. That's right. We've talked about all these intriguing connections and partial results. Yeah. But the core mystery remains. Uh -huh. Why is this seemingly simple problem so difficult to solve? It really is a head scratcher. Mm. You know, we've talked about how computers have checked, like, Trillions of numbers. And, and haven't found a single counterexample. Right. You'd think that would be enough to convince, like, even the most skeptical mathematician. But as you explained, yeah. it's just not that simple. That's the crux of it. While the absence of counterexamples is compelling evidence, mm -hmm. it doesn't constitute a mathematical proof. Right. To truly prove the conjecture, we need a universal argument, yeah. a logical framework. Yeah that demonstrates why it must hold true right. for every single number, no matter how large or complex. And that's where things get tricky, right? Yeah. It's not enough to just show it works for a huge sample of numbers. Mm. We need to understand- The underlying principles. Yeah, the underlying principles that govern the behavior of all numbers in the collapse sequence. Precisely. And this is where several inherent challenges arise. Yeah. First, yeah. as we've discussed, the conjecture involves both multiplication and addition, yeah. creating a nonlinear system, Okay. unlike linear systems, mm -hmm. where the output changes proportionally to the input. Nonlinear systems can behave in unexpected and unpredictable ways. So it's like trying to navigate a maze where the walls are constantly yes. shifting and rearranging themselves. Exactly. Even if you find a path that works for one section, right. there's no guarantee it will work for the next. That's a fantastic analogy. The nonlinearity of the collapse process makes it incredibly difficult right. to predict how the numbers will behave over time. Yeah. Even small changes in the starting number mm -hmm. can lead to vastly different trajectories within the sequence. And remember, we are dealing with an infinite number of iterations. Exactly. There's no way to know for certain how long it will take for a given number to reach one. Right. It could be a few steps, or it could be a journey that stretches on for Billions of calculations. The total stopping time is a major obstacle right. to finding a definitive proof. Yeah. Without a way to predict or bound this stopping time. Yeah. Becomes incredibly challenging to develop a universal argument that encompasses all possible numbers. It's almost as if the conjecture is taunting us. 
daring us to find that one elusive number that breaks the pattern. And then there's the fact that the Collatz conjecture, unlike many other unsolved problems in mathematics, uh -huh. doesn't seem to fit neatly into any established mathematical framework. So it's like... It's like a puzzle piece that doesn't quite match any existing puzzles. Oh, so mathematicians can't really rely on familiar tools or techniques right. from other areas of math to tackle this problem. It's a bit like trying to solve a Sudoku puzzle using the rules of chess. Wow. The strategies and approaches that work well in other domains just don't seem to translate easily to the world of the Collatz conjecture. So how have mathematicians been approaching this problem? Have there been any promising strategies mm. or techniques that seem to be making headway? Despite the challenges, mathematicians have been incredibly persistent. They've explored a wide array of approaches. Okay. From analyzing the sequences modulo different integers to looking for patterns in the distribution of total stopping times. Some have even tried using sophisticated computational algorithms to search for counterexamples. Okay. Or to analyze the statistical properties of the sequences. It sounds like a lot of trial and error, a lot of throwing ideas at the wall and seeing what sticks. In a way, yes. Okay. Okay. But even those attempts that haven't yielded a complete solution have provided valuable insights right. and pushed the boundaries of our understanding. Yeah. For example, Terence Tao's work on almost all numbers, while not a definitive proof, mm -hmm. has significantly advanced our knowledge of the typical behavior of numbers within the Collatz sequence. So even if we haven't cracked the code yet, we are getting closer to understanding the intricacies Absolutely. of this fascinating mathematical enigma. Every new result, every new insight yeah. brings us one step closer to unraveling the mystery okay. of the Collatz conjecture. And who knows? Maybe the key to unlocking the puzzle lies in one of those seemingly disparate areas of math that are connected to the conjecture. It's certainly possible. Yeah, perhaps someone will discover a hidden link between the Collatz process and chaos theory, or find a way to apply the principles of ergodic theory yeah. to predict the behavior of the sequences. The Collatz conjecture is a reminder that even in a field as rigorous as mathematics, yeah. there are still mysteries to be solved, challenges that push the limits of human ingenuity. It's a bit like exploring a vast, uncharted territory. Right. We've mapped out some of the terrain. Yeah but there are still vast regions waiting to be discovered. And who knows what wonders and insights await us in those unexplored corners of the mathematical landscape. It's that sense of wonder, that pursuit of the unknown, that drives mathematicians and scientists forward. Beautifully said. The Collatz conjecture is a beautiful example of how a simple question can lead us down a rabbit hole yeah. of profound mathematical complexity and intrigue. It's a problem that anyone can grasp, right. yet it has the potential to unlock deep truths about the nature of numbers, complexity, yeah. and the very fabric of our universe. And even if we never find a definitive solution, the journey of exploration and discovery is a reward in itself. Beautifully said. The Collatz conjecture is a testament to the power of curiosity, yeah. the enduring allure of unsolved problems, and the boundless capacity of the human mind to grapple with the mysteries of the universe. This deep dive has been an incredible journey. It has. It's made me realize that even in a field as seemingly well-defined as mathematics, right. there are still enigmas that can challenge our assumptions, ignite our imaginations, and inspire us to push the boundaries of knowledge. I couldn't agree more. The Collatz Conjecture is a shining example of how a seemingly simple question can spark a lifelong pursuit of understanding, mm -hmm. and how the journey of exploration can be just as rewarding as the destination itself. Well, thank you so much for joining me on this deep dive. Of course, it was my pleasure. You know, it's been a truly mind-bending exploration of the Collatz Conjecture, a problem that continues to captivate and challenge mathematicians to this very day. It really does. And for our listeners, if this deep dive has piqued your curiosity, I encourage you to delve deeper into the world of the Collatz Conjecture. It's a fascinating rabbit hole to go down. It really is. You might even find yourself like trying out the 3x plus 1 rule, on different numbers, just to see where they lead. You never know, you might stumble upon something groundbreaking. You never know. Maybe, just maybe, one of you listening will be the one to finally crack the code of this enduring mathematical mystery. That would be amazing. It would. So until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning, and never stop being curious about the world around us. Great advice.